In this video, I'm going to show how I change the timing belt. I have an ASIN kit, which is the TKH002 from Rock Auto. You should be careful buying any of the kits from a reliable source. Rock Auto is a good one. Just make sure that you don't buy something from eBay, which may have a original Honda label on it, but they might be all um, fake. So I have heard the problems with uh, buying something from eBay, especially when you are doing a timing belt change. And remember, if you are doing a timing belt, uh, this this engine, in this case, I have a 3.5 liter VTEC. And in this engine, you have um, an interference engine, which means your if your timing belt breaks, the uh, engine is going to be damaged. So the pistons will hit the the valves, and the valve clearance is is not there. So you want to make sure that your timing belt is um, replaced every hundred thousand miles, or hundred and five thousand miles around that time. My my uh, reminder came on on this vehicle. And so um, the parts I got on this ASIN are um, the water pump. The timing belt is a Mitsu, it's a Mitsu Boshi timing belt. And uh, this is made in Thailand, but this is a ASIN water pump, uh, which has uh, the ASIN logo in it. And it has a gasket which comes with it. It has a Koyo uh, idler pulley and a Koyo uh, tensioner pulley. So you want to replace both of them along with the water pump and also the the tensioner itself. So this tensioner is an ASIN tensioner. At least it has a, it has a mark on it that says ASIN, so I would have to believe it. And it has a sticker for uh, noting down when you changed it. So this is important if you want to sell the car, the next owner should know when it was changed. Two special tools you will need for the timing belt change are for the crankcase. So this is a crankcase. Uh, basically, you need it to support the crankcase so that it doesn't move, rotate. And to remove the crankcase, I got this called the crankcase removal tool this is actually from lyle and it is a 18 18 uh, uh, 19 millimeter uh, socket and it's a very heavy socket and uh, i'll show you how i used it to to take the crankcase off and actually this doesn't fit through it so this is going to be only used to remove the socket uh, remove the crankcase uh, bolt before working uh, on any of the engine parts, you should uh, take the negative terminal of the battery or the ground. And set it aside so that it doesn't touch the negative terminal. Next thing to do is to remove the serpentine belt. And to remove the serpentine belt, uh, you need a 14 millimeter socket and I'm going to go to the tensioner pulley here and if I put pressure on it this the belt will become loose and I can take the belt off next I have taken out the uh, front uh, passenger side tire and this is the axis you need and I have um, propped it up on a jack stand and I'm going to remove this uh, cover over here or fender cover and there are a couple of pins here uh, that uh, you can remove to get access to the uh, crankcase right there. I can put a screwdriver underneath it and once it's it's one of those body plugs and then I use a weed puller so it can go underneath here
and once you get that the whole plug will pull out there you go so you can see there are a few more here like this one I took off one here and over here and also um, there was one attached to this so I will get enough access one over there I'll get enough access I'm just trying to see if I can remove this one this is easier probably I will have more access inside so you can see that uh, that's the crankcase I need to get access to and above that so if I can remove these harnesses uh, these covers it should be easier one of the difficult part and probably the most difficult part is to take out this crankcase bolt and these are torqued almost uh, close to 180 to 185 pound feet of torque and over time this has probably been uh, very tight right now so I'm going to use the tool that I have bought because with a regular socket and it takes a 19 millimeter with a regular socket it's uh, probably not uh, easy to take it out and if you can't take this bolt out you are pretty much you know you can stop here and take it to a shop where they can take it out There you go, it finally came out. And you can probably see it did a good job. The pulley came off. Next I'm going to take the idler pulley and the tensioner pulley. That's a that's these two. So there is a bolt over here, 14 millimeter, and there is one bolt over here 12 millimeter the idler pulley and the tensioner pulley they are in a single assembly here and there is a long bolt and just don't forget that there is a little plastic piece so this this bolt doesn't come out all the way and then there is a short bolt that goes in with the pulleys removed it is easy to get access to these bolts otherwise it's very difficult to get to these bolts and uh, now I can take off these bolts in the bottom and there is one bolt over here which is holding the top so the top two covers are sitting on top of the bottom cover so you have to first remove the top two covers and then the bottom cover will come off I'm taking off the power steering pump there are two bolts in there um, one bolt they look like this goes in the bottom here and the other bolt is right there so once I have loosened it I should be able to move, remove it I put the uh, power steering pump with this uh, inlet to the top so that nothing drips over here and this one I had taken it off and you can see I have put this uh, above the the tank here so that nothing drips and now I'm going to start taking off the the camshaft uh, covers or the timing belt camshaft timing belt covers so there are all these bolts they are 10 millimeter bolts and the same thing for this so the power steering removing the power steering is an easy access to removing these plastic covers so I've taken the uh, the front camshaft cover or the camshaft pulley cover and the rear one there is a little harness over here so you want to take the harness out just be careful you don't damage it and once the harness is outside the groove you should be able to pull this out so here are the bolt patterns and you can see there will be bolts in the bottom which are easy to take these ones are easy these two are going to give you a little trouble so because these are towards the firewall towards the back side and this one is going to be a little tricky but you will figure out how uh, to take them out either from the top or the bottom and uh, 
Uh, this one doesn't have a bolt, so I think uh, this all goes. So I have all the bolts collected. All of them are the same size, so you don't have to worry about putting them back. And they have a little uh, shoulder before the uh, threads begin. So now the fun part begins is you have to see the alignment. And I'm going to take this off. This will come off, so just make sure that it goes in with the lip towards the outside. There's a little lip. But what you have to see is there is this, this arrow here. And you can see there is an arrow right here. So these two arrows are the matching arrows. And especially this key over here is going to match with the arrow. So I will turn it clockwise to match with this arrow. And that should be the TDC. What they call the TDC is the top dead center. So to turn the crankshaft, I will put the bolt back in and that should help. I have put a little marker to let me know where the mark is. And then you can see I have aligned it to the top. So this is the little arrow you can see if I get closer. Now, with this aligned, I'm going to check the, the alignment um, on the ones above. Look at the, the front camshaft, and I'll take the camera right there. You can see that uh, it's probably not a good view here, but if you look at the camshaft, this is the number you have to read. And in this case, it shows me that it is at number five. So this is number five. I need to be on number one. So the number one is at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is turn the crankshaft one more turn and check again. Aligned it again. You can see the alignment right there, the arrow and there's a little dot here, which is the little arrow here. So let's check the top uh, camshafts now, or camshaft pulleys. So if I look at this, and I'm going to take the camera in there, and you can see that there is a line right there, and that should align with the number one here so you can see that one and this is set to number one which is good and the same thing on this one is going to be aligned you can probably let me see if I can zoom in here you can see that line over here and it is going to be aligned to the line over here. So if you look at this, this line matches this line over here, right here. So this alignment is good. I'm going to double check from a distance here. And in this case, the, the camera matters. If you can put the camera in and it will, it will um, check it for you or you can record it. Now I have to remove the engine mount. And before I do that, I have to remove this section. And there are a couple of things to remove here. And then there is a horizontal bolt that holds the mount. You have to loosen that, take these two off, and then underneath that, there are three bolts that come out. So I remove this uh, little uh, bracket. It's just hold, held by um, two different, uh, two tabs here, one tab here and one tab on the side. So that should come off. And I'm going to start removing these, these harnesses here. And you have to be careful. So this is the middle one.
this the green one is to the right so you may want to take pictures So there is this uh, harness here and you can see the harness so just uh, pry open with a screwdriver and and slide it out so and it will slide out and you can see the the other bolt over here which is holding the bracket and then there is this harness which is which is holding against uh, this frame so i'm going to use a needle nose plier and uh, just squeeze it, this in it's just a plastic tab that goes through and then you should be able to remove this thing with the uh, with the uh, computer module uh, even if you can't remove this in my case i don't have a very shallow socket so I'll just leave it, it will come out with the module. So with this uh, removed with the bracket, actually there are three bolts. You can see one bolt here, one bolt over here which goes onto that side and the back one, you can see it sits right over here and the lower one is, is going to be right over here. So with that removed and then there is a little pen and you can see this harness uh, clip that clips to to this this bottom here and i'm able to get clearance to remove the the mount so this one i'm going to un, um, unbolt this one first so there is a horizontal one and because this one if you don't unbolt it now it will be difficult to remove and then once I unbolt those, then I can take these two off, these two mount bolts. And I have to support the engine from the bottom. To support the engine, I have supported it uh, with a little piece of wood and under the oil pan here. And I'm looking from the front here. And then I also added a jack stand, my second jack stand, on this support, which is the, the hosting point for the car with the uh, the long bolt horizontal bolt removed from there and I remove the two so this one can come off the two bolts over here so this piece is out and there are three bolts here one two and three there are 17 millimeter bolts. You have to take the engine mount out um, in order to reach the three bolts that are holding the engine block here. So the two long bolts and one short bolt in the back will remove the engine mount. And that was very easier to get to with the, uh, the PCM module removed. And I'm going to leave the bolts here so that I don't lose it so the engine mount looks to be fine you can in inspect it and you know with 100,000 miles 11 years I'm just going to put this back in but I also know how to get to the engine mount if needed so you can inspect it and and see if, if uh, you need to uh, replace it so with the engine mount removed, you will have access to, there is a, a bolt which is sunken in here, and there is one here and one in the bottom. So the short bolt, all of them take a 14 millimeter socket. So I've already loosened these two top ones and the bottom one I'm going to reach from the bottom. And that will remove this uh, uh, engine mount that is holding, uh, it's, uh, it's connected to the block. The engine mount removed you can see that the top two bolts which go on the top are the same length over here and the bottom one is shorter so this goes over here i'm going to put these bolts in here as it came out now my whole area is is pretty much open to go and start removing the tensioner and uh, the idler pulley 
and uh, the pump looks to be fine but I'm going to change it because I went through all the hassles of getting to it and uh, I'll keep this pump as a spare so looking at how it is the belt looks to be very good I means considering uh, 11 years and 100,000 miles that uh, can probably last another uh, 30 40,000 miles who knows so in order to take uh, the belt off I have to re release the tensioner so this is the tensioner and the uh, I have to take these two bolts off once I take these two bolts off the tensioner will come off the tensioner has two bolts in here and I'm going to replace the tensioner but if you want to use the same tensioner you have to um, squeeze this in using a clamp C clamp and then put a pin or something so that when you put it back you can uh, release the pin to put the tension on so here is the tensioner pulley and this bolt and this needs to be reused so and I have the new one this looks like also from Koyo the same one I got and I will keep these in case I need to have any problems with it So this is the idler pulley and you can see it has some uh, anti-seize in it. I'm going to put some anti-seize also. And this is also made by Koyo, the same that came in the ASIN kit. It still functions fine but since it's uh, recommended I'll go ahead and change it. Next I can take the the timing belt out and it's you have to be a little careful on on taking this out without disturbing the the timing marks I'm going to start from the bottom and then I'll take the ones from the top The timing belt looks uh, pretty good if you are worried about 100,000 how long can I wait it probably can go longer but I will not take a chance because if the timing belt breaks you have a damage to the engine and interference engine it doesn't show what's the uh, make of the timing belt so the next one is to take the water pump out but before I do that it will release all the coolant and so there are these bolts that need to be removed around the water pump and I have to catch put a catch pan underneath to catch the coolant though it will drip everywhere I put a, a, a catch pan in the bottom and I'm going to start removing it the bolts are this size we to reuse it and I'm going to put some thread um, anti-seize on these so this is the original uh, water pump it still looks good didn't have any uh, any problems and this is actually a Honda and it has a Honda logo on it though I think they are all made by the ASIN 
So comparing the old pump and the new pump, they need to be the exact, this is AC in Japan. And let's look at the fins. So this is the new one. This is the old one. The issue with these are these bearings go bad and they start to leak. So there will be leak from inside. I'm going to keep this. It looks, still looks good. Maybe if we keep this car to 200,000, I can put the, the original water pump back. Or if there is a leak on this one, I can always put this back. So I have a gallon of uh, antifreeze type two coolant and you should put the same type two coolant that uh, came with Honda. I always try to replace the, the parts and uh, fluids with uh, Honda. So I'm going to take some coolant and dip my fingers in here and just soak this uh, seal here or the gasket. Before I put uh, the new pump, I'll just make sure that the, the surface is clean. And it looks pretty clean. I don't think uh, there was any, uh, any sealant or gasket uh, sealant uh, applied. We put the new one. The new water pump is in. I'm going to put the idler pulley. This is also from Koyo. And I'm going to use the bolt, original bolt. I'm going to use some anti-seize. I use the Permatex anti-seize on it. Just make sure the bolt is The water pump bolts are torqued to 11 foot pound, it's very low. Same thing with the uh, tensioner bearing. This is the new one, and this is the old one. Looks like the color has changed from red to blue. Still Koyo. Looks to be pretty much the same. And this one goes in. So you have to put this in and then the bolt goes in here. For this bolt I'm going to put a little bit of, of anti-seize though this probably is okay. This one takes a little bit more. Same as the as the idler pulley. Now I'm going to put the tensioner back on. Just make sure you don't take this pin out because if you take the pin out, this will pop out, and you don't want to uh, you don't want to um, push it back in. So that comes after the um, belt is on. In order to put the uh, the tensioner back. Uh, you will need a 5 inch or longer C clamp. I have a 6 inch C clamp from Harbor Freight. And then you uh, push it in and then put the, um, the, uh, this clip in um, or the pin. So the tensioner is in here and those two bolts for the tensioner right there one and two and just make sure that the tensioner I have not released the pin yet you don't want to release it but make sure that this is rocking against the head of the tensioner and it should move freely 
The next part is putting the timing belt on. This is very important step. What you want to do is start from the crankcase in the bottom and you want to put it in the grooves, take your time. Just make sure that the, the TDC, the top dead center is still on and you can see there is a little notch here and once I take off I will probably be to see but this needs to align with this top here. So what you want to do is go clockwise and you need to have tension on the right side so there shouldn't be any slack on this one. The tricky part of aligning the the rear camshaft pulley and you will notice that it's not totally aligned I can't take the camera up there and usually what happens is if you try to align it with the line it is going to snap back and and turn one fourth uh, quarter and that's because the springs in the piston are such a way that it, it brings you back now what you can do is you can rotate it back anti-clockwise don't try to turn the whole um, whole pulley in a clockwise direction otherwise the pistons will hit uh, one of those cylinder heads so the rear camshaft now is all aligned and if when you try to push it you will see that it jumps in in one hop so it it always you know you should be aligned properly and you can uh, align it I put a 17 millimeter socket and you can rotate it clockwise and it will come back to your aligned right, right uh, aligned line so this is the line in the rear camshaft matches the top one and matches the back cover for this one also it is aligned to number one maybe you can see it here it's aligned to number one here and it is marked over here so it aligns the way all over here. So these two are aligned now. I'm going to put the belt on. It's not easy to put the camera here while I do it but just make sure that there is no slack in this line here and I'm going to pull it all the way before I put it through the top uh, the top uh, one over here the front one so I'll use both my hands and then you want you want to go with as tight as possible on the camshafts especially the front camshaft first the the rear camshaft after the going through the water pump pulley. So I'm making sure that the tension is, is all there and it has been routed. I have not released the, the tensioner pin yet because if I want to make changes I can. So even one, uh, one notch on the uh, timing belt will create a little problem with one valve or the other. Here are the alignments on the crankcase. It is right there you can see and it is right there the arrow so they are aligned. If you can see this this mark here this mark here this has to align to the back you have to make sure that the slack is on this side and not on this side. Always, you know, do it clockwise all the way up. And if you put it in the correct grooves and it should always have a slack over here. So I'm going to pull the pin. And 
that should put the tension on it. And I'm going to rotate it six times. Um, so for each uh, 360 degree of the crankshaft, the camshaft pulleys go 180 degrees. So if I rotate the crankshaft twice, the camshafts will be back into its position. So every two rotations of the crankshaft, I'm going to do a few more rotations. Always rotate it clockwise. Don't rotate it counterclock. And if it gives a lot of pressure, you should stop and look at the alignment again. In case the valves are stuck against the pistons, you might damage it. So this is a good, good uh, way to try manually. So the alignments look good. And uh, I'm going to start putting together back all the components I, I took out. I'm going to put the uh, mount back. And these, these bolts, I have put some anti-seize on them. So it will be just the opposite of how I took it off. Next, uh, the engine mount goes, I put a little bit of uh, anti-seize on these bolts. So these are big bolts. So the uh, engine mount goes in and as usual I'm putting some thread locker in these bolts and I have put the horizontal bolt first but I have not tightened it yet. I will tighten it once I get uh, these two bolts aligned and I don't think I have any problems with the alignment but if you have problems with the alignment you can always raise it up and use the jack to raise it up underneath to align so they all will be tightened with a with a top wrench now i put the mount in and tighten the the bolts i can release the uh, the jack stand and release the uh, the the other stand as well next is the uh, transmission uh, control module the three uh, little bolts go in one over here the difficult one is in the back and one in the bottom right there you can see if I align it right there the second one and the third one is going to be in the back that's the that's the difficult tricky one and I have to just feel it and put it in so there's this little the um, it's like a little pin that goes in and then these ones these these ones go back the white on the left and push it all the way and then it will lock into place the green one is on the right make sure it's all the way and it will lock and then this uh, gray goes into the into the middle one so they are locked I'll put the cover back on here I've aligned the covers and I have put the bolts in in 14 15 16 17 and remember there is a notch here for a wiring harness to go so I'm going to put those back so the idler pulley and the uh, tensioner pulley for the serpentine belt. Is in. There are two bolts. There is this one. 
which is a smaller bolt and then the, the big one over here. Next I will put the harmonic balancer and I'm going to take this bolt off. And it is recommended to use some engine oil on this one just to um, put some engine oil in there. And this thing will go in. Make sure that this this little piece is there because that's the one which will move or make it move. So now is the other difficult piece is you need to put this in and this will hold the 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 harmonic balancer and then you have to tighten the the bolt to 180 foot pound it's pretty high so um, that's the last piece the power steering uh, pump it goes in and there are two bolts to put the serpentine belt i have found it useful to to put everything in like the crankshaft and the air conditioner pulley on the bottom and i will put a diagram here the only thing i leave alone is you can see i put a a 14 millimeter on um a ratchet or a uh, or a bar so when I push it, it will on the tensioner pulley, and I, when I push it, I can use the other other hand to put the uh, belt around the, the tensioner pulley. So before I start the engine, I should fill up the um, the coolant, and this is the type two coolant that uh, I'll be using. And one last and not the least is to put a sticker that came with the kit and put the mileage and the date that you uh, did the timing belt change so this will help in case you you uh, either uh, keep your car or you uh, sell it the next owner should be able to see that it was replaced finally um, put the battery negative terminal i'm going to start the engine And that started fine. And now it has 99,865 miles. So one thing is you may want to do is uh, put the uh, tire back on and bring it to ground level because your oil pan is probably tilted and you don't want to turn the engine on when the um, oil is... Uh, you know on one side of the pan and it might give you some fault error it's running fine and uh, you will have a little whining noise from the the power steering pump where there might be air in there but over time that whining noise will go away and it's pretty running pretty smooth so in my case uh, the uh, timing belt the first time i did it was off by one teeth and that gave me a P0344 error and I put it in a different video on on the the diagnosis for that one and so the check engine light came on but uh, it uh, is now running fine if this was helpful give the video a thumbs up and also if you can subscribe to my channel I have other videos on this car on other repairs including the alternator change and uh, also if you have any comment uh, you can comment on the video and i will try to respond